Today I'm going to make a string art pendant. This is something a friend and I have seen around at a couple of belly dancing shows and I've even seen some in the mall and I decided to see if I could figure out how to make them and I think I've come up with a pretty good solution. You don't need a lot of supplies so here's what you do need. You need some good sturdy wire so I'm using 14 gauge copper wire then you need some flimsier wire. I'm going to use 22 gauge copper wire just because I happen to have a pound of it, but I would recommend that maybe you would consider using a slightly smaller gauge wire, maybe a 24 or even a 26 for this project. You need about 11 inches of the 14 gauge wire to make one pendant of approximately three and a half inches. So that's a, that's a really big pendant. You can make them any size. You will also need two colors of embroidery floss. And if you get the kind that has just a little bit of a sheen to it, it looks really pretty. Prettier than the matte kind, unless you're going for more of an earthy design. The kind that is really super sparkly is a little bit more difficult to work with, so I don't recommend it, uh, especially not when you're starting out. But the, the kind that's just a little bit shiny, pearlish, um, it looks really nice when it's made into the pendant. Fingernail polish or glue. You need wire cutters, just because we're working with wire. You'll also need pliers. I'm just using the same pliers that I use for my wire wrap jewelry making because I have them and they're handy. So because we are working with wire and we're going to need to bend some edges around and just hide things, um, why not? Why not? And you'll need something called a coiling gizmo. This is a coiling gizmo. It comes with two different sized metal rods which you can coil the wire around and it just makes the coiling go really fast and easy. You just do this and it's you're making a coil as you're going. If you can't find a coiling gizmo, here's what you can get. This is called a conduit hanger. You can buy it at the hardware store. It's pretty inexpensive. This one is a half inch conduit hanger. And then at the craft store, you can buy these gigantic safety pins, which are used for quilting, I believe. Just unfold one of the safety pins, slip it through the conduit hanger, and it's not quite as easy to use as the coiling gizmo, but it's basically the same idea. And once you get the hang of it, it makes the coiling of the wire just that much easier. And that's everything you need to get started, so let's get started. So first let's measure about 11 inches and cut it. Then you can go ahead and work on shaping that into a teardrop shape. Leave one end long and the other end short and don't close it up because we're going to have to slide the coil around it but you can just go ahead and sort of mark where that bend will be where they're going to join together now let's go ahead and make our coil so we want to take four feet of the 22 gauge wire So just sort of wrap one end around the end of the safety pin that has the hook. Then slide through the conduit hanger and hold on to the wire very close to where the hook is and then start turning. Now it'll take, it might take a little bit to get a good grip to get used to doing this. The idea is you don't want the wire to bunch up on itself, you just want the wire to coil right next to itself. And then once you get going, hopefully smooth sailing. All the way to the end. So pull it off. And now we're going to open up the coil. 
And really you just need to open it up so that it's big enough to fit around your teardrop. Then you can slide it into place around your other wire. I'm going to cut off some of that extra. And now I can go ahead and bend this little tip around. So I'm going to just go ahead and smush that edge around the best I can. And now at this point, if you want to refine the shape of your teardrop at all, this is pretty much your last chance. Once you've started to put the thread around it, you cannot change the shape of it at all or the thread will come off. Be careful not to damage the coil and just make sure that you're happy with the shape. Now take your first color and we're just going to use one little tiny piece of the thread. There's like six pieces of thread all together here and just pull one out. Don't get it knotted like I just did. Take the thread and knot it at the top. Make a really good knot because this thread can be kind of slippery and undo itself. And then we're just going to start wrapping. Now, depending on how anal you are, you can count the number of coils you have and go exactly to the one in the middle. Or if you're not that anal, you can just eyeball it. Pull the thread through one coil after the other going around and around. While you're doing this, be careful that you're not pulling too tight because you'll change the shape of the teardrop. For the first layer of thread that you're adding, this isn't as important, but when you add your second layer of thread, if you're pulling too tight and you're changing the shape of the teardrop, your first layer of thread will come off. Your whole pendant is uh, it's pretty much over, it's ruined. You can add a third color, although I have not had great success doing that. I do tend to pull too tight and then the whole thing falls apart when I add the third color. Then when you've made it all the way around, tie your thread off at the top. And once again, make sure that, you know, you put in some good knots, lots of knots, especially the shinier threads really don't like to stay knotted. They do not stick to themselves at all. Now I'm ready for color number two. And the second color, I'm not going to go all the way around the whole thing again. I'm just going to start maybe a little more than halfway up and just go part way around. But again, I need to secure it at the top. Now I know where the center is because I can see where my overlap happened. So I go straight down to the center, then up the side to a little over half. And this time I will just keep going till I get back to the center. Now back at the center and up the back of my design. Knot it off really well. Take the fingernail polish and just glue all the way around the edges and up here at my knots. You can take those extra tails of those threads and just wrap those around and you can glue those down also. Then remember the extra little wire bits. You can wrap those around that thread also. And now with the extra part that you left at the top, if you know how to make a, a wire wrap loop, you can do that. Or you can just make, you know, just bend it over as a loop. And you can use the wire to cover up the thread if you don't want to see it, or you can leave the thread exposed depending on what you think looks best for your design. And there it is. A pendant.